Welcome to the study guide video for Principles of Programs. Chapter 11, More Object-Oriented Programming. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's like we're fixing to open up a treasure chest full of powerful tools and tricks that'll make our code as smooth as a well-played slide guitar. We're talking about the heavy hitters of object-oriented programming inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. These concepts might sound fancy, but I promise you, they're easier to understand than trying to tune a guitar in the back of a tour bus. Now, Chapter 11 is going to take us deeper into the heart of object-oriented programming, showing us how to write code that's not only efficient, but also reusable and adaptable. By the time we're through, you'll be building software with the confidence of a seasoned songwriter penning a hit song. So, grab yourself a glass of sweet tea, get comfy, and let's get this oop party started. When you instantiate an object, the automatically created method that is called is a constructor. Every class has at least one constructor. Both constructors and instance methods can be overloaded. A default constructor requires no parameters. As soon as you write a constructor, the automatically created default constructor no longer exists. When you write a default constructor, the automatically created version no longer exists. A destructor is called most often when an object goes out of scope. A destructor and constructor can be called automatically. They both can have the same name as their class, and both have no return type. However, a destructor cannot be overloaded. Subclasses are not created automatically. A class that is used as a basis for inheritance is called a base class. A child class is a derived class. A superclass is not a derived class. A child class can be a parent to another subclass. A derived class inherits all the data and methods of its ancestors. Polymorphism. Now there's a word that'll make you sound smarter than a rocket scientist. But don't let it scare you, it's really just a fancy way of saying many forms. In OOP, polymorphism means that objects can respond to the same command in different ways depending on their class. Let's say you're building a farm and simulator game, because nothing says fun like digital agriculture, right? You got your animal class, and then you got subclasses like cow, chicken, and pig. Now all these animals make noises, but they sure don't sound the same. With polymorphism, you can have a single make sound method that each animal class implements differently. So, when you call make sound on a cow object, it moves. Call it on a chicken object, and you get a hearty cluck cluck. You see one call, many different answers. That's the beauty of polymorphism. A class's methods usually are public. Its data fields usually are private. Now, sometimes in life, it's best to keep things simple. Just like a good, old-fashioned country song. That's where abstraction comes in. Imagine you're building a music player app because who doesn't love a good tune? You got all sorts of complicated code running in the background, handling things like audio decoding and file formats. But do your users need to see all that mess? Heck no. Abstraction lets you hide all that complexity behind a simple interface like play, pause, skip buttons. Users don't need to know how it works, they just need to know that it does. It's like the difference between knowing how to tune a guitar and just being able to pick up and play a sweet melody. Section 5. Relationships in the Object-Oriented Programming World A library is a collection of predefined, built-in classes that you can use when writing programs. An environment in which you can develop GUI programs by dragging components to their desired positions is a visual development environment. Errors in object-oriented programs are called exceptions. Understanding relationships is key to designing well-structured and efficient software. We got three main types of relationships, association, aggregation, and composition. Think of it like this. Association is like being friends. Aggregation is like being in a band. And composition is like being family. Association is loose. Objects can interact, but they ain't dependent on each other. Aggregation is a bit tighter. Objects work together, like band members making music. Composition is the strongest bond objects are inseparable, like siblings from the same mama. Knowing when to use which relationship will make your code as harmonious as a well-rehearsed gospel choir. Section 6. Wrap up. Oop like a pro, you got this. Well folks, we've covered a whole heap of ground in this here Chapter 11 Roundup. We've talked about inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and even a little bit about object relationships. Now I know it might seem like a lot to take in, but trust me, with a little practice, you'll be slinging OOP code like a pro in no time. 
The general principle of exception handling in object-oriented programming is that a method that uses data should be able to detect errors, but not be required to handle them. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. To see more videos like this, please click in the rectangle in the middle of your screen. To see other videos from this channel, please click the circle on the bottom right. After all, programming like music should be a joyful and creative endeavor. Now go on and make some beautiful code, y'all.